Good morning all. Mary Bolger here, naturalist with Iowa County Conservation, and I want to welcome you to our virtual Critters Live this morning. We are going to be talking about a really neat animal that used to be in the hundreds of thousands of even millions um, a number here in the middle of North America, the Great Plains, uh, the bison. So I'm just going to be kind of talking a little bit about a little bit of the history of the bison and then I actually have some really neat, I have a bison hide, some bones, some, some different things that are made from bison parts that we're going to be talking a little bit about. Um, and again, as always, if you have any questions while we're doing this live here, um, just go ahead and type those in the comments and I will do my best to answer those for you. Um, so the bison. The bison, um, maybe you have seen a bison um, in captivity um, and they are raised on farms now. There are some places where they are um, in big national parks that are roaming free. We do actually have a national um, park here preserve in Iowa. It's called uh, Neil Smith's Prairie Wild uh, Refuge. And they do have a herd of bison there that kind of roam around along with some other really neat animals. And so bison would um, inhabit the areas where there was the prairie habitat or the Great Plains. And so these big open areas with lots of grasses and vegetation, not really very many trees um, at all. And so the reason that they lived in this prairie habitat was because that was their primary source of food. They are herbivores, so that's all that they ate. And so these gigantic herds of hundreds of thousands, sometimes even millions, would roam the prairies um, and follow the um, growth of the grass around the middle of North America here in the Great Plains, all the way from Illinois down south into Oklahoma and Texas and then over to the Rocky Mountains and then even up into Canada as well. So they would roam around depending on the um, growth of the grass and also the um, seasonal changes too. So um, bison are huge animals. I just have a, a picture here of a bison cow. So that's a female and then a juvenile bison here. You can tell much smaller um, in size. And depending on what, um, if they were a cow, um, a female or a bull, which is the male bison or a um, young one, depending on how much grass they would eat and they would also need water sources and different things like that. Um, we kind of know the bison, the typical, um, there's the, another close-up kind of picture of a calf. Some interesting facts about the bison calf. Um, when they are born, they are about 50 pounds. Um, so that's a pretty big baby. Um, they're fully furred, their eyes are open, and they have to learn how to walk very quickly, especially when they're out in the plains um, before settlement. In those big herds, we had big predators that would roam the plains. And so they had to make sure they could be mobile because not only is their herd mobile, but there are predators and they have to be able to make sure they can get up and move around. Now they would get some um, lots of protection, of course, from the adult bison, but they need to be on the move right away. So almost at birth, they had to be able to stand up and move around those calves. Now, when they're very young, they would drink their mother's milk, um, but as they would grow, they would start to eat um, the grasses, the vegetation and things like that. Taking a close look at a bison head, those typical um, bison characteristics, of course, those big horns, that big furry forehead and head, big nostrils and eyes, those little ears. And then of course, the bison hump right up here behind um, their head. And that is pro what provides the bison kind of their size and their shape. Um, and they can do that because they have really neat, um, skeleton structure. So taking a look at this, they are very closely related to cows. Um, they are in the bovine family, of course, but 
um, they have a little bit of a different skeletal structure. If you take a look here, um, they have a huge skull, of course, a really extra long neck, but then their vertebra or their backbone, this is what gives them their big hump right here, are extra long. And so muscle and tissues, um, wood and fat right up in here um, would give them their big hump and a lot of power. Of course, they have a really big rib cage and those four legs and their tail there. Um, really interesting skeletal structure um, for the bison. Now, one thing that the bison would do, oh, let's see, I have a comment here, no sound. Can anyone else hear me? Let's see, I'll keep going. If, no, if, if there are other people that can't see me or hear me, I should say, um, let me know and I'll try to figure out what is going on. Um, so, all right, thanks Patty. <laughs> um, so the bison here is, oops, let's go back to our last picture here. This is a picture of um, the bison and it is doing something called wallowing. And so what they would do is they would roll around on the ground. Um, they do this for two reasons, to help kind of keep par um, insects and other parasites out of their fur and also to cool off. They do this in kind of um, muddier um, areas and dustier areas to do that. And because they're such massive creatures, they would create these indents in the prairie that are still seen today. Um, so just like horses and cows do sometimes all animals, they would get down, they would roll around and it was kind of hard to do with their big hump there, but they would do that and create these kind of um, indents in the prairie habitat um, that would sometimes fill with water then. So taking a look at this picture, so we know that bison, again, they, they roamed the Midwest and in the winter time, just like now, we are we have a big snow cover, lots of snow right now. So how would they get to their food source if there were feet of snow? Well, they would dig down. They would use their massive head, kind of like a snow shovel. Um, so they would move that snow out of the way, out of the area, and they would get down to that kind of dried or wilted grass. That's how they would survive in the winter time if they were in an area with lots of snow. Um, because again, they're herbivores, that's all they can eat are the plants. And so they would have to um, get down to those plants. Some things would be sticking out, but they would have to dig down in the snow using their head as a snow shovel. And so when it comes to bison, they're usually pretty docile, except when it comes to mating time. So male bison would battle it out and they would use their massive heads and their horns to headbutt and try to kind of, when they're looking for a mate, try to find or win a mate in that way. Um, most of the time, Again, other times of year, they're pretty pretty docile. They would be, except during this time, the males would kind of duke it out and uh, battle for those females. Here we have a little picture of the bison hooves, what their tracks look like. And we're gonna actually look at some real hooves here in just a moment when we look, when we look at the different parts. But you can see just like deer, or cows, or horses, they have hoof prints. Um, this is their front or their fore, which is a little bit larger than their back hoof or track. And then one last picture that I kind of want to um, show you is it's, we won't spend too much time on this because this just lists the um, things that Native Americans would use their body parts for. So before settlement, of course, um, we had hundreds of millions of bison that would roam here in Iowa and they would use almost every single part of the bison. So they would hunt bison. Um, they would eat their meat, of course, and some of their organ meats, but they would use their the other parts for lots of different things. And so what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to pick up my camera. I'm gonna turn it around and we're gonna look at some of these things. Right now, I have spread out on the table a real bison hide along with some bones and different things that um, Native Americans would use for tools. So we're just gonna go over those and kind of take a look at them right now. So let's switch up the camera here. There we go. So I'm just gonna take a step back here and so you can look at this massive bison hide. So this bison hide is a juvenile male. So it's not a full grown adult size male, but I have it laid out on two eight foot banquet tables. Um, so it is huge, um, even for a, a not fully grown adult size male here. And so we're just gonna go through and we're gonna take a look at some of these parts and um, take a close look at some of these. So we'll start right up here near the front. Um, and you can see, if we're taking a look at some of the um, hide, the fur here, it is very thick fur. And that provides them again some warmth, especially in the winter time when they're out on the cold prairie. Um, and on different parts of their body, it's going to be a little bit of different thickness. On their sides, especially near their head, you can see it is much thicker and longer and kind of darker. This is where their hump would be. If I take a step back, it's much um, lighter in some parts, but really, really thick. And I have a bison skull right here. And so again, this is the juvenile skull here. Looks a lot like the, a cow. And I want to close up, take a close up of their horns right here. So their horns, of course, are something that stay on them. They start to grow from when they're very, very young. Um, they grow out of, I'm going to take the sheath off here. They grow out of their head. So this is not something like a deer that they shed every year. They grow from birth and they stay with them as a part of their skull their entire lives here. And they are covered and protected with something called a sheath. So this is made of a protein called keratin, which is um, kind of the same materials that our fingernails and our hair are made from. You can see they have really big eye sockets. They didn't have super good vision, but they had large eyes. Taking a look at their teeth there, you can see that they're fairly flat, good for grinding lots of plants, and they needed to do that because that is what they ate all of the time. So when it comes to male bisons, if you can pretend its head is right here, they always had what was called a beard. So male bisons had that beard coming down from their chin. Native Americans would use this in ceremonial dress and different things like that. They would also use the teeth. They would make jewelry. These, this is a necklace made out of incisors. Um, and here is a close-up look at what a bison from the top all the way down to the roots right here. Big, massive teeth. They're very, very strong, but very, very flat. Good for grinding those plants. As we go around past the head, again, here is where the hump would be, that kind of lighter section. Um, here are some sheaths from the hooves right here. And so just like the sheaths on the horns, this is made up of keratin and it covers the bone of the hoof and helps protect it. These, this is kind of the back section or the dew claws. They again would use this for um, different ceremonial dress. Um, they would also use the hooves to um, make um, kind of adhesive type things as well. Kind of going along here. Um, this is something that they would use when they would need to make kind of textile material. So this is hide, this their leather hide that is cleaned. This is part of an organ on the inside that's kind of a little bit more like paper. And these are actually needles that they would use for sewing. These are porcupine quills um, that they would, they didn't have them around here, but they would trade with other Native American tribes to get those for sewing. 
And here's just a little section of the fur that I kind of want to show you the back. So they would tan this with um, different, they would use brain materials or other materials from the bison and clean this all up and make it all soft. And then you can feel this, this and see this really thick, nice fur. So they would use hides, um, blank hides, I should say, or cleaned hides like this one for um, shelter, like for teepees. They would use hides with the fur still on for clothing um, and also for um, different things like blankets and things like that to keep themselves nice and warm. But they would also, let me take a step back so you can kind of see here. This is actually a kind of a storage container and I'm gonna bring it a little bit close and open it up. You can see it's kind of in the box shape and they would use it to um, store things. So they would use the hide. This is um, tanned hide here and this is hide with still the still f the fur. It's not as soft, it's a little bit, they would tan it in a different way. So it would be kind of like a container that they could use. Here we have a piece of sinew, and so this is um, the material that hooks their muscle to their bones, the ligaments here. Um, they call it sinew, and you can see it's very stringy. They would use this when they were binding things. They would make rope with it and use it for um, things like that. Kind of coming around to the tail. <laughs> we're at the tail end of the bison. This tail is pretty long. It's about a foot in length. You can see a little bit lighter, but longer hairs at the end here. The bison would use its tail to kind of tell other bison how they were feeling. So if it was down and just kind of moving gently, um, the bison was probably grazing. It was probably doing okay. Um, if it was kind of sticking straight out, there might be a predator near. So they need to kind of um, be on alert. And if they were in distress and that predator was coming close, they might stick their tail straight up. Or they'd also do that, of course, when they were going to the bathroom. Um, speaking of that, what I have here is a sample of some bison dung. Um, Native Americans would collect this and they would use the, um, this is kind of an awl, so it's a little bit of a sharper tool that they would use for sewing and different things like that. So um, the bison, again, a massive animal, um, and Native Americans would use lots and lots of parts of it to make sure that they would um, use every single part and made sure nothing got, went to waste. So um, that's all I have for you about the bison today. If there are any questions that you have about the bison, please put those in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Also, if you have any requests for future um, Critters Live, put those in the comments or you can email me at mbulger at co.iowa.ia.us. You can check out our Oh, let's see. I got a comment here from Patty. She said, west of the lake, there's a wallow. Ooh, that sounds cool. Patty will have to show me sometime where that is or tell me tell me where it is and I'll try to go look for it. Um, oh, you played in it as a child. Cool. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so if you have any requests, um, email me or put those in the comments. I'd be happy to... Um, do those for you. If you want to learn about a different critter, check out our past um, Critters Live um, on our Facebook page. We have all the recordings there or on our YouTube page. Just search Iowa County Conservation and go to the Critters Live playlist. We've also done another series called um, Nature Crafts Live where we have been doing some crafty activities outside in the snow and ice this time of year and we'll do lots. We'll continue with those um, for the rest of the spring and maybe in, even into the summer. I want to thank you very much for watching today and I'm wishing everyone stay warm. Um, make sure if you go outside you're dressing in layers because it, it is cold out there um, and have a wonderful day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.